In this example, we're going to set stock using the cylindrical option. For a given size, round stock costs less than square stock. So it makes sense to use it for round parts, particularly if you're making a large quantity of parts. If you plan on following along, open part 4.4 and save a copy of it in your working directory. Now there's no initial setup we need to do for creating cylindrical parts except for start a new job. So select the CAM tab on the command manager and select job. In our job we're going to set the stock to cylindrical. Highlight the box for axis of revolution and now we need to select an axis that's going to be the center line for this stock. This could be a sketched edge, an axis, a temporary axis, or a cylindrical face. In our case, let's select the cylindrical face on the bottom side of our part. Now that the orientation of our cylindrical stock is correct, let's look at the offset dimensions. There's two ways that we can define the radius of the stock. We can either use an offset dimension or select the Use Stock Radius option. Most often, you're going to select Use Stock Radius because we buy our bar stock in predetermined sizes. So select Use Stock Radius and then we can enter a radius value. Bear in mind, stock is purchased based on its diameter. So we actually enter the diameter divided by 2. For this example, I found in the material catalog that I can buy this material in 2.5 inch diameter bar. So I will enter 2.5 divided by 2. Also keep in mind bar stock is usually slightly larger than the specified value. Though in most cases that's not enough to matter. If you ever have any doubt it's a good idea to measure the actual bar you're going to be machining. Axial offset 1 sets how far the stock extends above the part. In this case we're going to enter a value of 50 thousandths of an inch. Decimal 0, 5. So I have plenty of stock to machine off the top of the part. When bars are cut to length, the cut may not be perfectly square. So you want to make sure that you've left enough stock on the top that you can clean up any saw marks. Offset 2 sets how far the stock extends below the part. You want to leave enough material so your part can be gripped in your clamping device plus some clearances so the tools don't cut into that clamping device. I'm going to set my offset value to half of an inch. So I'll enter 0.5. Although we already covered working coordinate systems, I will quickly note that most often when you're working with round stock, the datum or working coordinate system is going to be on the top center of the part because it's best to pick up the center of round stock. Well, that covers creating round stock and I hope this video was a help.